Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's unseen video. The biggest unseen video we have ever done without a shadow of a doubt. So I think it's actually going to have to be broken up into probably two parts. We're going to start with WWE World. We'll move on to WrestleMania. There's lots of things to talk about. Uh, we need to talk about the top stories as well. So let's get started, work our way through and see where we end up. So uh, Charlotte was asked at WWE Worlds uh, what it's like to have Andrade back. Uh, she said that she'd waited three years and she said that like she couldn't believe she was now injured. Um, but she's excited for him and she's happy that he's home. Right here, look, we've got uh, pictures coming from the actual uh, WWE Worlds. So here you can see a big banner with lots of superstars. There you can see Roman Reigns' glove, his Ula Fala. Uh, you can see the bloodline tree in the background. Obviously not the one that they actually showed at the press conference, but uh, a nice uh, representation. Uh, this is from the bloodline kind of exhibition that's at WWE Worlds. Um, and you can see that there's also a Bray Wyatt exhibition as well. Uh, we looked at the floor plan yesterday and we knew that there'd be a Bray Wyatt bit and we know what's in that now. It's the Firefly Funhouse. You can see they've got his belt just in front as well and these images up on the wall which look awesome. Uh, back to the Bloodline bit. We've got uh, a table set up. They've created like a room and there's pictures of all the Bloodline members. And then you've got like these little bits. There's a table in there with a chair at the head of it as well. So nice uh, little touches that they've done uh, in these little areas, right? Here's Ball Nakano. So, uh, Maurice, thank you. Ball Nakano arriving for her Hall of Fame induction. And, yeah, all these people jumping in, getting her to sign loads of stuff. How do they even recognize her? She looks nothing like when she was wrestling. Uh, I wouldn't even... She could walk past me. I wouldn't even recognize her. She looks so different now. But, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that Hall of Fame induction. John, shout out to you. He said, acknowledge the wise man. So we've got an ECW uh, jacket, ECW cap. We've got a pink jacket with an old school telephone. Uh, there is a stunning Steve Austin robe as well. And a picture of stunning Steve with Paul E. Dangerously. So, uh, yeah, this is all from the Hall of Fame exhibition. Here's Greg Miller. So he has been around having a little look. Here we've got the ECW entranceway. We've also got this giant belt. There's a part that is all just titles. And they've got this massive undisputed championship there. There's a glimpse at the Firefly Funhouse. Up in the corner, I don't know if you've noticed, it says performance in progress. I wonder if that was actually there. I mean, I can't imagine that they would just add it if it wasn't there originally. But I don't remember ever seeing that during an episode. So performance in progress. Obviously, you've got Lily, which Brady pointed out, you know, unusual to see her in the Firefly Funhouse. Don't think it means anything. It just, this kind of feels like the right place for her to be. Uh, and we've got the puppets. We've got uh, Wobbly Walrus. We've got, I wonder how Paul Heyman feels. <laughs> Paul Heyman feels about that. He should he should bring Wobbly Walrus up on stage during the Hall of Fame induction. Uh, then we got Huskers. We've got the paper plate. It looks like he's holding the paper plate Fiend mask, right? Which is from the episode when we first saw the Fiend. Rambling Rabbit. Oh, God, it's just so good. It's got everything. So, so good. And then look at that. That's the In Your House set which I'm guessing is the actual set. I don't know why they would just make another one for no reason, but yeah, this is from back in the day, the mid-90s. Uh, obviously, they used it for NXT as well, unless they created a different set for that. But either way, just, oh, amazing. So, so good. So, so good. So, yeah, all of this I'm massively, massively into. 
Here's uh, Stephanie Hypes. Let's uh, take the sound down. We can have a just quick look around. There's the ring. It's got uh, Slim Jim. You can see the fun house. There's the ECW bit. There's the belts section that we were talking about. Um, so all these different championships are in cabinets, and you can take a look at them. There's that giant belt as well that we just saw uh, Greg was posing in front of. And uh, it just gives you just a bit of a glimpse, a bit of an idea of just the scale of this place, how big this place is. Uh, and it needs to be big as well because obviously they're expecting a lot of people to go along to WWE Worlds. Uh, so, Dale Boy, shout out to you. Brady, thank you. This is from Reese. And here, look, we can see this is the tattoo area. So here you can go along and get an actual tattoo. Someone got quite excited about that one there because that's actually AJ Lee's logo. I mean, I, I don't think this is a reference to anything. I just think, honestly, this is just classic logos from back in the day, all throughout the history. And you can just pick out which one you want and they'll put it on you permanently, like an actual tattoo. Um, I should imagine if you're there... And it's a once in a lifetime thing. I could imagine this being very tempting, to be honest. I mean, I've got no desire to get a tattoo, um, but I could imagine it being quite tempting to commemorate this kind of once in a lifetime experience. I'm not sure I'd go for that Dusty Rhodes one. Though. <laughs> I might get the in your house one there, like Cody in your house logo, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah man you could have uh, you could have some fun with that but we can't if you want to have a look go to reese's right um twitter we can't sit unfortunately and just watch videos because we've got so much to go through uh cow shout out to you buds so this is what it's like when you first go into WWE World. This is from Wrestling News, right? And uh, there is the shop as you enter. So I don't know what they've done with this footage. Obviously, there's a lot of creators and a lot of news organizations that are there. That's a big championship title store. This is the superstore. Uh, so what I would say is it's clear that Wrestling News have been. So I'm sure if you follow their channels, you'll be able to get uh, quite an in-depth look uh, at WWE Worlds. But uh, look at this. This is a real good look around the store. And um, there you can see like all the stuff in the baskets. There's the Bray Wyatt stuff. That is awesome, isn't it? loads of cool stuff there loads of chalk line jackets as well by the looks of it um and obviously shirts absolutely everywhere and then that looks like the entrance into wwe world so we looked at the plan yesterday there's one entrance that takes you straight into wwe world and then you there's another entrance you can go straight into the store and then i think you can get into wwe world that way as well but um yeah god i wish i was there it looks so good so uh reese as well he said the rock was meant to be on stage over an hour ago people are getting fed up and they're starting to leave i've seen a video of people chanting bs right they're so tired of waiting thankfully he does finally arrive so i don't think it's a serious issue or anything i think by the time he arrived they were like it was two hours right? Uh, they've now taken down the schedule. It's possible the 2K24 tournament has been postponed. There's no comms on that. It was meant to start an hour ago after The Rock. So because The Rock was delayed, the 2K24 tournament was delayed, kind of knocked everything out. So The Rock causing a bit of carnage. Here, look, so Haley has been there and looked at the Hall of Fame display. It's only 15 seconds long. The Paul uh, Heyman stuff. Then we go uh, US Express. We can see there, there's Captain Lou Albano. There's Bull Nakano's robes. I don't know what's meant to be in that box. There's clearly something meant to be in that box. Is That that looks like Rocky Johnson's robe, which is the the Rock's dad. So it kind of looks like his robe. And I don't know what's meant to be in there, but it looks like there's nothing in there. Unless it's John Cena. Um, but yes, that's uh, a glimpse at the Hall of Fame display. 
Uh, here we've got uh, the Attitude Era display as well. So if we pause this, this is from courtesy of The Score, right? So uh, there's King of the Ring with the robe and everything. Saw an Austin stuff. There's Undertaker stuff. So look at all this actual ring-worn gear and all these items. There's Stone Cold's vests. Uh, that's the bonnet from uh, Stone Cold's uh, truck. We've got just all this old school Attitude Era, massive SummerSlam banner, gold dust uh, singlet onesie, body suits, however you word it, the robe. Oh, my God. Vader, look at that. Big Van Vader. Raw is war. WrestleMania 15 graphics, Triple H entrance attire, Shawn Michaels entrance attire, great images, great merch, foam items, and I think that's China's, yeah, it looks like China's, Rikishi stuff, The Rock, oh god, it's amazing, isn't it, it's just amazing, I would just, I would just be here for so long, look at that, oh my god, Raw is War, massive banner, and to my knowledge, all of this is legit. It's the actual items. These are the actual things out of the warehouse, you know? I mean, all, all of this is kept in storage. So, oh, wow. Look at this. Sexual chocolate. Mark Henry. Uh, we've got headbangers stuff. We've got mankind stuff. Uh, Mr. Socko there as well. Dude love. Uh, section the love shack so good cactus jack mick oh, loads of mick foley stuff isn't there this must be like a mick foley uh section is that stephanie stephanie mcmahon trish kurt angle the uh th those won't be the medals um but uh yeah look at all this so so good i mean it's one of those where you just you really can't take it all in to be honest um that was a two minute video <laughs> i just don't know how we're gonna get through this i don't know how we'd get through that that is the line for the checkout at wwe well i don't even know where it goes i don't know where it goes so it's just maybe it never ends um perhaps it's just like a giant circle and these people are like trapped they just keep going round and round god only knows but uh, uh trent thank you my friends uh, Trent again. So uh, the Brad Pack said, this is the coolest thing I've seen at WWE World. It's the IC belt from 84 to 86. So look at that. Proper old school. Amazing. Amazing. Right. Cody said, if he wins on Sunday, he'll change the belt design. Uh, that's actually one of our top stories. So as soon as we're done with this WWE World folder, we'll go to the top story thing. But that sounds and feels like a big story that if Cody wins, he'll change the design of the championship belts. And there's rumors that he said as well that he'll change the name of it. But I can't find footage of that. But we'll get to it. Hey, do you remember we were talking about Julia? There she is. Julia is at WWE World, which is funny because she told us that she was going to go to the Himalayas and shave off one of her eyebrows. Someone lied because instead she went to WWE World. So very exciting, Cal. Thank you. WWE World's uh, ticket schedule, superstars, and more. Okay, right. So what we'll do is let's go full screen on that then. Boom. So here we've got a bit of a breakdown about WWE World's, right? Where it is, who you can meet. So here I'm just going to go down. Uh, if you want to look at any specific day, you can see the superstars that are going to be appearing on these days. Right. So if you want to know a specific day, you can pause it. I don't know if that's absolutely everyone, but that gives you a good idea. But this was the bit I was interested in. This is what's happening. This is the schedule for WWE World. So today we had the 2K Showdown tournament. We also had on the main stage Cody Rhodes and Rey Mysterio. And of course, we ended up getting The Rock as well. Uh, Pat Show is tomorrow. We've got the Up, Up, Down, Down live stream. That's going to be featuring Xavier Woods, Tyler Breeze. And then on the world main stage, we got Becky and Seth. Then on Saturday, Bray Wyatt 
Becoming Immortal documentary panel. So on that panel, there's going to be Big E, Natalia, Jojo, Taylor Rotunda, and more, right? That's going to be amazing. Then we've also got on the main stage, Charlotte, Drew, and Randy. Then on Sunday, we got the Slammies, and we will be doing a live stream for that. So join us as we react and enjoy the Slammies. That's going to be hosted by Kathy Kelly and Big E with appearances from WWE superstars. Then we've got the Mattel Elite Squad panel featuring CM Punk. Wow. I'd imagine there's going to be a lot of CM Punk shown. A lot of CM Punk shown. I've no doubt about that. Ultimate Edition CM Punk. They haven't shown one yet, but I've no doubt that it's coming. Um, and then on the main stage will be Rhea Ripley. Then on Monday, Pat does his show again. And we've got Bianca and we've got Jay Uso. So that's what we've got coming up. Uh, over on the schedule for WWE Worlds, lots of stuff, I'm sure you will agree. Right, Rossi is there. Rossi is there. Let's go big on this. So this is uh, uh, Rossi uh, Agawa, who started Stardom. Now, he's left Stardom now, and he's going to start a brand new promotion. There's a lot of excitement around that, and people are thinking and wondering if this new promotion could be NXT Japan. It might not be branded as NXT Japan. It might be his promotion, but it could be that it works directly with WWE, and it's basically WWE's Japanese promotion, right? It's hard to know uh, what the agreement is going to be, but the fact that he is at WWE World shows us that there is some sort of relationship. And apparently, he is the reason that WWE managed to secure Julia because she is coming to WWE. We know that. Uh, apparently, he played a part in uh, Kairi Sane returning to WWE. Uh, one of the biggest stars he ever helped develop was EO Sky, which is why he's posing here. Uh, this is a very, very important guy. A very important guy over in Japan. And it really feels like WWE are working with him, to be honest. So lots of excitement about the fact that he was at WWE Worlds. So there he is as well. Look, pointing at uh, Kairi Sane. And um, yeah, as we said, he played a part in her coming over. Uh, it, here's a picture look, of just some of the signed uh, items that I don't know if you have to bid on them or if you can outright buy them, but uh, some lovely looking items there. Love that Stone Cold one. The Hogan one looks good as well. Um, but that Stone Cold one, look at that. Lovely big signature. Great looking image. It's a lovely size. It would look great on the wall. So, yeah, some great stuff. And look at that, the figure display. We got The Rock, we got Ray, there's Muhammad Ali, there's some ECW people. I mean, we will have a look at the merch. I've got a whole merch folder, but this kind of gives you a good glimpse of some of the key items that we're going to be looking at. I love the Rocky Maivia up in the corner because we haven't actually had that figure in a long, long time. It was a ringside uh, collectibles exclusive before. Uh, here you can see like the high chief, uh, Peter Maivia. That is the Rock's grandfather. That is the Rock's dad as well, Rocky Johnson. Uh, I love the uh, the statue. I'm not sure that's going to be sold. I think that's just for this display. But uh, you can see it's all based on the Philadelphia steps. And it's kind of got that Rocky vibe. I think we all think of Rocky when we think of those steps. Judgment Day down here. This vehicle, by the way, uh, this is coming. This is going to be sold. This is something you will be able to purchase in stores. So, uh, yeah, and I think I don't know if the Ray figure comes with it, but I'd imagine it probably does does but yeah that's uh that was shown uh as well and as we said we do have a whole merch folder to try and get to right uh triple h said huge day in philly this is going to be massive are you ready and honestly this is a 13 minute video of just a queue a sped up queue where it's just someone going down outside wwe world just showing you how many people are trying to get in it's incredible uh tom said they've been working on NXT Asia for a long time, but the pandemic derailed a lot of plans. Let's just say meetings are actively 
taking place. I'm telling you, man, Ro Rossi being there, and you don't need me to tell you this, is big news. And if they're about to launch NXT Asia or something like that, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, that will be WWE, like, picking up the, the cream of the Japanese talent, you know, getting them into that NXT Asia building uh, up that brand as its own brand and then really like you know once they're ready bringing them over to wwe this is something that triple h has dreamed of for a long time he wanted one in europe he wanted one in asia he wanted one in mexico he, he wanted like nxts all over the world developing talent and then when they were ready bringing them to the wwe for real or bringing them into the American Florida NXT just to finish things off and then get them to the main roster. So it's all very, very exciting. Right, erase your mind. Thank you. The Rock has finally shown up after leaving fans waiting for almost two hours. Let's see if we can uh, see The Rock. There he is. Comes out. Looks like an absolute boss. A final boss as he comes out crowd is still going crazy even though he made them wait for two hours but uh there he is that's what he was wearing that's how he was looking i believe this was a sit down interview with michael cole that's what he did so uh there we go that's the footage <laughs> chris shout out to you the rock was not was is 90 minutes late to wwe world the cameraman isn't thrilled look at the camera he was dozing off the cameraman was starting to doze off as he was waiting for The Rock. Right, how cool is this, said Tea Time Danger. Shout out to you, buds. So Triple H shows us the throne, shows us the gear that he wore. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, to actually see the throne from that iconic entrance, to see that entrance attire. I mean, I believe Mattel made a figure of this moment right um so to actually get to see it is amazing and triple h just spends a bit of time talking about the fact that charlotte and sasha and alexa were the women that helped him i think that's probably the worst kept secret in wrestling i feel like uh, everyone knows this now but it's um nice to go back and it's great to see the throne great to see the entrance attire and um as uh, tea time said there very very cool very very cool Right, uh, here's uh, Cody Look in front. Look at the crowds. Look at the crowds. An absurdly fun afternoon, says Cody Rhodes. He came out and spoke to the fans, as we uh, heard earlier. He has kind of hinted that if he does win the uh, championship on Sunday, then he will look to change that belt. I've got the clip of him actually saying that, and we will get to it. Right, it's Bryn again. Shout out to you. So AJ Styles noted that he's got many friends in AEW. He said he expected trouble when CM Punk returned at Survivor Series. And he said, I was wrong, right? I want to step in the ring with Punk and I want to bring the house down. Then we got this from Carmella. And I, got, I read this and I really felt for her, you know. Carmella says that she hasn't slept in five months. And she's trying to pull it together for WWE Worlds. She said that her eye bags are on another level. She's not been able to do any of the normal appointments like eyebrows, lashes. She's leaving today for WrestleMania weekend. And she said, how am I going to be Carmella this weekend? Mella is that girl. She can't be out here looking like Raggedy Ann. I've got to pull it together. So it's, it's it, you know, it's a really interesting insight into just some of the things that the superstars have to go through, you know, looking incredible, looking like a million billion dollars when you just are not feeling it, you know? I mean, she hasn't slept in five months. She's just had a kid and she's like, I, I, this kind of comes across that she's really feeling a pressure you know, and I hope that she doesn't because the fans will just be thrilled to see her for her. So I really hope that she doesn't feel that pressure. But I thought it was a very interesting insight. 
uh, as Scarlet said, you guys killed it. So one of the things that you can do is you can do a superstar entrance. So uh, obviously there's lots of stages. We've seen some of the exhibitions. Um, we've got a whole Bray folder to have a look at and an ECW folder. So we can dig into that a little bit more. But one of the things you can do is an entrance, right? Mm -hmm. So here, look, these two came out and they redid the Scarlet Carrion entrance. Um, and Scarlet saw it and she said, you guys killed it. So here they are. You you can do this. You can choose from lots of different entrances. They went with this one. I don't quite know if you... I'm, I'm guessing they film it and you get to buy the footage. I can't imagine they give you the footage. I'd imagine you have to buy the footage. But um, I would imagine that's probably what, it's, uh, what it is. But very good. Very cool. They did a fantastic job. And uh, as Scarlett said there, you guys absolutely killed it. So look at this. I mean, it's an absolute disgrace, isn't it? Uh, let's go into the Bray folder because I know that's where many of you will want to go, right? So uh, Brady, thank you, pointing out that Lily is in the fun house. This is courtesy of uh, Alistair McGeorge, who said, great tribute to Bray at WWE Worlds. Uh, so let's have a look at the images. Here, look, we've got the Firefly Fun House. We've already had a look at that, but you can see performance in progress. You can see the Fiend House the mallet you can see mercy the buzzards i mean all of these are the correct fabrics so they very much could be the real deal um i mean imagine being there and looking at this if it is the real deal which i think it probably stands a good chance of being imagine being there looking at it thinking that bray had stood in there performed in there um That'd be difficult, wouldn't it, to, to look at that? It feels like something massive is missing, and that's because it is. And then here, look, we've got uh, uh, the doorway. We've got some of the masks. This is obviously his return at Extreme Rules. And uh, uh, the chair, the rocking chair, a lantern, um, the masks that the uh, actors, performers wore uh, when they were dotted around the arena. There's a better look at the Fiend Championship. Obviously, we've seen it before, but uh, you can see it for real at WWE Worlds. And I believe this is what um, uh, Alexa Bliss wore, wasn't it, during the Swamp Match when we first saw her kind of joining up with Bray? I, I think she appeared to like Braun, and um, yeah, I'm sure this is what she was wearing. So, yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. So lots of uh, fun stuff there. Then we've got a video here. So James, shout out to you. Wrestling news again, look. WWE Worlds, Bray Wyatt Funhouse. Now I said, I don't remember ever seeing these chairs and they've all got L on the back, right? Is, is that a way of just a fun way of calling all of these people losers? Is it just a fun, like a L's on the back? I think is really interesting. They, the L's don't need to be there. So is it a way of calling the audience the kids losers? Is it just another little subliminal message? Because I don't remember ever seeing these. And I've said that on social media and people are like, yeah, but you hear the kids cheering during the episode. So I think it's just a way of kind of letting you know this is what they were sitting on all along. This this could be another little, another little kind of, I don't know that it, I'd say Easter egg, but just a fun little thing, you know. Why, why do they all say L? So here, look, if we take that down, let's have a look at the footage. So you can see going along. And then we go over and then we get to see uh, the fun house. So there's the puppets. Abandon all hope ye that enters here. Kind of come round. There's uh, Abby the Witch, Lily. There's Mercy. There's the hammer. Mallet in the corner. And uh, as we said, you can go and you can't stand in it uh, understandably, but uh, you can get images and footage of it. It's amazing. There's a, a nice shot, actually. So that's what it looks like with the chairs in front and the Bray picture over at the side. So that is the Bray Wyatt part with the uh, championship belt, I think, just out of shot. So very, very cool. There was a ECW one as well. So this is the ECW one. Obviously, the old school entrance stage looks like they've got a championship on display and a few uh, like ring gears and banners and whatever. So that's uh, Kenny McIntosh. WWE World has got some great displays. This one popped me 
big time so cow thank you uh god wrestling news again man they've been all over this really is worth going to their channel right so here um uh luke shout out to you let's uh take the sound down because i think there is entrance music in the background but uh yeah we've got uh uh, all these Rob Van Dam singlets that does look like head. Then we've got these banners in the background, um, which are really fun. So all these singlets. There is the entrance stage, which is just so... I, I don't know if that's the actual one, but it looks amazing. And uh, look at the banners. We've got other... Uh, Taz. Wow. That's Taz's ring gear. Chair with barbed wire wrapped around it. Cactus Jack's ring gear as well. It's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. There is so much stuff to see and get pictures of and just get closer to, you know. I think as fans, we always want to get closer. We always want to find a way of, like, feeling even more involved. And um, WWE World really does allow you to do that. Uh, it's Bryn again. Thank you. WWE put this out eight hours ago. It's Bobby Lashley. Look, coming out. Coming out that entrance and having a look. Uh, look at the smile on his face. He says, I was not one of the original ones, but obviously he did feature on ECW. Uh, and he's got like a, a fondness. And he said he was a fan as well. Like He's like, look, my man, my man over here, RVD. We had several battles and Al Snow. This is incredible. Being back, it makes it more special. I respect the time I was an ECW world champion, but I respect these guys more. Some great footage there. Great footage. So that was the ECW stuff, right? Uh, then Rhea Ripley got a tattoo, right? So if we go down, we got footage here. Uh, Discover PHL said Rhea Ripley getting tattooed on the WWE world floor right now. This was this was everywhere, man. This was everywhere. Like they actually announced it on social media that she was going to get tattooed. I've still not seen a brilliant image of what she actually got done, but I know that it's right here. That's where it went. And uh, so that's her getting actually tattooed. This guy, Brian, said, it's the coolest moment of my life getting mine done right next to you. So he's over here getting his done whilst there's Rhea. So Rhea is here. This dude's over here. He got let me in. That's lovely as well, isn't it? The way that it's been done. The way that it's got the let me going up that way and then in here and the red. That's a great, that looks great. That's a really great looking tattoo. So here's uh, Rhea responding to that footage, right, of her getting tattooed. And you can't quite see it. If I click on it and we go full screen, it's this knife here. It's a knife. It's a, it's a, it's a blade of some description uh, here. That's what she ended up getting done. So uh, that's the best image that I've seen of it. I haven't seen her tweet it out, unfortunately. I thought she would have, but um, I've not seen her tweet it out. But there, that was uh, Rhea. Uh, yeah, Rhea Ripley told Rey Mysterio to shut up. And then she told Jackie Redmond, shut up, Rebecca. And uh, Jackie responded. Boo! Shut up, <laughs> Shut up, Rebecca. So Shut up, Rachel. So I don't know what Calite is. I would imagine that's probably shut up. But uh, there we go. So Rhea having uh, a bit of fun. Right, let's go to... I said we'd go to top stories. We probably should have started with this rather than get to it 33 minutes in. But, you know, I am useless. So here's footage of Cody from WWE Worlds. Since black and white, the last two years have been the most successful time in WWE history. And that, that's the renaissance. That's all of you. you call, I, somebody asked me, what is WrestleMania yesterday on... One of the news stops. I said it's a culmination of all the guys and girls' hard work and a culmination of all the fans' energy over the past year. So I was asked, "Am I ready for WrestleMania?" I think I asked you already, but let's ask again: Are you ready for WrestleMania? Yeah. Woo! All right, Cody. I'm gonna finish with 
Here we go. We talk about WWE being as hot as ever. We talk about the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, being as ready as he has ever been for this match on Saturday and Sunday. If you walk out of the biggest WrestleMania of all time, WrestleMania XL, what kind of champion will Cody Rhodes be? Good question. And how will it be different from the tribal chief, Roman Reigns? He'll show up. <laughs> He'll have matches. Well, I think the type of uh, champion I'd be for starters, from a logistical standpoint, is I would be on both Monday Night Raw and Friday Night Smackdown. That's interesting. That's interesting. And I don't know. Do you guys like how the title, the title belt itself looks? No. Change it. So maybe uh, Winged again, Eagle. I don't want to get part before horse here. I have to beat the greatest champion in the history of our business, Roman Reigns. But if I do, mm -hmm. maybe we change how that title looks. Yeah. Let's do it. Really, if I could do anything as champion. I would want you guys to have fun. That is 100% what I'm in the business of doing. And that's it, really. He doesn't say anything else after that, right? Um, there is a report here that he said at some point, uh, he confirmed to WWE World that if he defeats Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40, he will be reverting the undisputed WWE Universal Championship back to just WWE Championship. I've not seen him say that. I've not seen any footage of that. I'm not going to say he didn't say that, right? Because you can see WrestleTalker reporting it, and I've seen other people reporting it, but I've not seen footage of him saying that. But it would make sense. If he does win, let's change the belt design. Design. Let's call it the WWE Championship rather than all the million other words we have to say. And um, yeah, let's go from there. And there's a lot of uh, people excited that it might be a slightly changed sort of winged eagle, which would kind of make sense because if you think about it, uh, Seth Rollins has got sort of a changed big gold. The front plate's not quite as big, but it's it's all gold. And then they've slapped that globe in the center, put the WWE logo on it. I'd imagine this will be a winged eagle that again is amended. So that would be, if he does win, something like that would be what I would be thinking. But um, yeah, he's got to win it first. We need to cross that bridge first. Um, and then, yeah, this is uh, Wally Mania, so we can go to that folder next. And uh, Shelton Benjamin was there. Bobby turns up. Street Profits were there. Uh, uh, I believe that Ricochet and Samantha were there as well. Uh, Wally Mania has been going for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, a lot of people go to it. It really is like a big celebration, big party, uh, a good few days out from WrestleMania. Um, and uh, because it's Wally, who's got a good relationship with WWE. He's able to get quite a few stars, quite a few superstars to come along. So uh, let's go over to that one, actually, because it'd be good to uh, tick that one off. It's up here, Wally Mania. So if we go down... Uh, the Street Profits arrived and FAOP chants broke out at uh, Wally Mania. It's Bryn again said, we really are in the Renaissance era. Samantha on that instrument or whatever it's called. So, yes, this is amazing, right? So, Samantha plays, I think it's the flute, right? Uh, and she's basically got Razor Ramones. Can't play it because copyright, but she it's Razor Ramones theme music. And she saw she puts like these different lyrics over the top. She kind of like sort of freestyles over the top. And then like she goes into playing the flute. Right. Again, might not be the flute. Who cares? But it's amazing. It's brilliant. It's so good. I actually tweeted out she should so do a whole album of her just kind of like ad libbing and freestyling over the top of retro themes. And honestly, I think people would really go for it because she's got a great voice. Great voice. And it sounded so, so good. So, uh, again, look, wrestling news, they are absolutely all over this weekend. 
Uh, Public Enemies podcast, Bobby Lashley arrives. So Bobby Lashley, uh, fresh off of being at WWE World, looking at uh, that ECW uh, display. And also he was on the bump. And did you know when he was on the bump, he said that he's been reaching out to someone, an old friend, that if they can make things work, he would like to bring back, get back in with. Now, I think at the time on the bump, there was chance of MVP, right? So it could be MVP. But then here he is on stage with Shelton Benjamin. And also, obviously, he used to be in a group, The Hurt Business, with Cedric Alexander. So MVP, Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander. Those are the sort of names that I was thinking, looking at. But I don't know who it could be. We don't know if it's going to come off or not. But uh, he kind of implied that there might be room for another member in the Pride. And um, I think Master Taker points out as well. I think it's in this video somewhere. Uh, Master Taker points out that, again, on the bump, he was announced as, like, uh, I think the leader of the Pride. They actually said it and used it as the group's name, even though it's never on the graphics. I don't think it's on their Titan Tron. Uh, the Pride is seemingly what that group is called. But um, for some reason, they don't seem to be quite running with it yet. But that is how he was introduced on the bump. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp said, my least favorite or my last favorite wrestler before I got into media was Shelton Benjamin. Incredible to see him honored like this at Romania. So, yeah, there was a lovely honoring of him where people were coming in with some lovely messages and uh, kind of celebrating his career. It was a lovely touch, actually. Uh, here's a picture of Sean Ross Sapp. I couldn't quite tell where he was, but he posted this literally at the same time as he posted this. So I just presumed that he bumped into her at Wally Mania. But that's Gail Kim. Gail Kim. So wherever it was, it would be around WWE Worlds. Sean Ross Sapp bumping into Gail Kim. Uh, the ultimate WrestleMania weekend feud, Mia Yim and Shelton Benjamin. So uh, there's Mia Yim on stage. Uh, they've got a friendly uh, rivalry, these two. <laughs> She did actually send in, though, a lovely uh, a lovely message for him, a video message just saying, like, they're going to make sure that his legacy isn't forgotten and that it's built upon and all that kind of stuff. Because as we said, they took a time out to honor him and she uh, posted a lovely message. But then we had this moment where she ran on stage and she was like in his face. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, Wally Mania. There might be a few other little bits clips snippets that uh, appear out of that um because uh, normally there's quite a bit to uh, talk about right mass taker there just talking about they introduced bobby as the leader of the pride right ray mysterio said that he will have a philly eagles themed gear at wrestlemania so there we go ray mysterio will have philly eagles themed gear at wrestlemania now, whilst Bobby was on the bump, he spoke about being handcuffed, um, feeling frustrated. He said last year not being at WrestleMania was the worst experience of his career. And Carrion was listening. And uh, Carrion came in with a comment, which we can hopefully whoosh over. Can we do some whooshage? Can we whoosh, whoosh it in? Let's see, where are we? We are... Oh, my God, I've got so many folders. There it is. Uh, handcuffed. How tight are those cuffs? I'm just curious because some of us are so tightly handcuffed that if we even mention handcuffs, we're gone. You know what we do instead of crying about it publicly? We do our best to outperform the position delegated and break them that's what it takes to hang with the best i'm gonna smash this guy sunday he ain't the same anymore so uh love that from carrier bobby was saying that uh the group has felt kind of held back and handcuffed um and carrion's like saying well handcuffs you know what do you think we've done when we were handcuffed like we broke those handcuffs 
I love the fact that Carrion is reacting like he's disappointed. This isn't the Bobby that he knows. I really like that. I really like that. It was good. It was short and it was sweet and uh, it was really good. Right. Triple H is excited to welcome Grammy Award winning singer songwriter Coco Jones to WrestleMania. She'll be performing the country's national anthem to kick off WrestleMania on Saturday. Here, look, erase your mind, chat to you. We've got banners all over the place. Massive banners uh, all over the stadium uh, and all over Philadelphia by the looks of it. So, yeah, huge, looking awesome. Right, PW Insider said Rhea Ripley is getting a live performance at WrestleMania. Motionless in white. The band that perform her theme song are slated to be on the show. Right, Seth Rollins uh, via The Favourite said, when you look back in retrospect, if we're able to do what we want to do at WrestleMania 40, it'll go down as one of the most historic game-changing events in the history of our industry. <sighs> Big words, man. Big words. Uh, erase your mind, thank you. Wrestle Features just showing us that this is the cover of the official WrestleMania program, which I just think is really cool that we get to see what the official WrestleMania program looks like, because that's one of those little details that can easily get lost to time. But uh, there it is, if you wanted to see it. Uh, yeah, these superstar vlogs have been going up. There's quite a few. This is Bailey's. Um, Bailey kicks off her WrestleMania week with a candid reflection of what her dream match against EO Sky means for her career. And Bailey said, weird pick, but great workout. So there we go. Right, while some in WWE expect John Cena to be in town for WrestleMania this weekend, Cena will be off the board for anything major physical-wise in the WWE realm for most of the remainder of 2024, as he will be filming the second season of Peacemaker from June to November. So this was quite a big story. Don't expect John Cena to be getting physically involved in stuff uh, because he needs to go off and film Peacemaker. So uh, there we go. Uh, Samantha Irvin is going to be the ring announcer for every match on both nights of WrestleMania this weekend. So there we go. We're going to have Samantha Overload. She's going to be uh, doing the ring announcing for every match this weekend. Right, let's go to WWE, see if we can work through this. Jordan, thank you. Uh, this might need to get whooshed. Let's whoosh it. There we go. Uh, even after the departure of Scott Damore, WWE and TNA have continued to communicate about potential future ideas, but nothing concrete has happened yet. The door is not closed. There are some TNA execs in Philly this weekend, but no word if they are in town specifically related to the WWE relationship. So that's interesting, isn't it? They're in town, but we don't know why. We don't know why. Could it be that WWE is working with Rossi and that promotion in Japan? Are they trying to further strengthen ties now with TNA? It's very interesting. Here's uh, Drew. All right, I've just arrived in Philly. Straight to the gym, of course. The last chest workout before WrestleMania. This Sunday, and they let me out of the cage. They let me out the cage. And look at that. Look at that. Brian Cage, AEW superstar. Brian Cage. Didn't even know that these guys had like an ongoing friendship. Um, but yeah, that's got people talking. We're not expecting Brian Cage to necessarily come into WWE. Don't know what his status is with uh, AEW. But pretty fun that these two guys hooked up and uh, went to the gym and got some work in. So... Henry, thank you. Right, the youngest and only Ukrainian woman in WWE. No one's ready. Look at this girl. 
look at this girl. How can you not look at her and not see the next Rhea Ripley? I mean, obviously, we don't know her promo, her in-ring skills are going to be of that level. But from a looks perspective, it, all the raw ingredients are there for the next Rhea Ripley. And I've not seen that new documentary yet, you know, the next gen one. But I have heard... It might be her, I think it is, that she gets in with a girl who goes really rough on her and, like, she ends up bruising her ribs and all this kind of stuff. And actually, while she's being asked about it, she's like, I need a second. She gets up and, like, you can hear her, like, weeping off camera. She's really upset about the fact that, like, it's stalled her development a bit. So that show, honestly, that next-gen show on Roku definitely seems like it's worth a watch. So this girl, this Xena Sterling on my radar. So uh, Harry Van Vliet, thank you. Uh, Dakota Kai said a heads up. I will be at WWE World on Monday uh, between 2.30 and 3.30. Paley said, good to know. Uh, Dakota said, pull up then. See you there then. <laughs> Think I'm bothered. Right, uh, tomorrow, ESPN Sports Center, right? So here's the Miz, and he's all uh, checking himself out, getting ready, and then he gets this, which I don't know what that means. If you're a Sports Center fan, I don't know what this means. Top 10, do they do a regular feature or something? But uh, either way, the Miz is going to be on Sports Center. And uh, this top 10 thing appeared. So, just so you know. This is really good. This is really good. Look at this. These two guys recreated the Rock and Cody beatdown. Right? And look at the belt he uses. <laughs> look at the belt. And then at the end, he gets like, he wipes his head. Uh, and he like wipes it onto the belt and everything. Mama Rhodes! Mama Rhodes! The amount of times I've shouted, look at you now, randomly throughout the week, said it's Bryn again. So, yeah, brilliant. So, so good. Right, uh, and a WWE star shares that he blew up backstage regarding a booking decision. This was LA Knight, and he says that last April, he'd had weeks and weeks and weeks of great reactions, and he knew that there was no plans for him to be on the card. No one had mentioned anything. Nothing was happening. And uh, apparently backstage after one of the shows, he just stormed through Gorilla. He had to go to a quiet place. Someone on the social media team was like, oh, man, the reactions you're getting are massive at the moment. And uh, I think he said something like, well, will you tell those in charge, please? Because no one seems to notice. No one seems to realize or see the reactions I'm getting. He was really frustrated. He was really worked up. This time last year, uh, he kind of goes into detail about it. So I don't know where that interview is, but uh, it's, there's an interview with LA Knight where he details his frustration before they finally started to move on him around kind of like the summertime. So I, the thing I'd say, though, is I think WWE and Triple H in particular kind of have a lot of this mapped out and planned out. Um, so it, it, it can be a bit tricky to like pivot and actually kind of go in a different direction. But um, even even so, it's uh, one that's still frustrated LA Knight. Right, this is probably going to have to be our last folder for this video. Um, we've still got loads to go through, so I think there's going to be a bonus episode that's going to have to drop, right? This was pointed out by Ghost of Madness, right? This is... Oh, okay. So, he talks about the Tribal Chief, right? So, he talks about the Tribal Chief. This bit here is like... So, he gestures over Tribal Chief... And then he says, you've got the tribal chief. And then he seems to say, and the final boss. But the way he gestures, he sort of gestures that the final boss is above the tribal chief. So here he says, look, tribal chief. And then boom, you see that hand gesture there? It's not much. So tribal chief, boom. It's that gesture that sort of implies you've got the tribal chief and then you've got the final boss. And it's that gesture, it could be absolutely nothing, but it was enough for Ghost of Madness to go, did, tell me, did you notice? Boom. 
Could be summer, could be nothing. Thought I'd bring it to your attention. Right, after the weekend's WrestleMania, The Rock will jump right back into filming his next movie role, The Smashing Machine. So, Tribal Chief 3009, thank you. Uh, right, um, Gaming Enigma. Oh, yeah, this is who has been helping The Rock out. Turns out Gallus, I think Michael P.S. Hayes and Bobby Roode have been working. Apparently, two rings got sent. Uh, so two rings were sent to LA, right? Uh, WWE and um, The Rock have been renting out a training facility. One ring was set up in LA where The Rock resides, and he's been working and simulating matches with Gallus. Um, obviously, he's working towards a tag match, so Gallus have been helping him. Bobby Roode has been helping him. Um, and Michael P.S. Hayes. Uh, has supervised the training sessions. Veteran referee Chad Patton officiated the sessions as well. So uh, apparently he's been putting the work in for a good few months. Right, this is the uh, Bloodline tour. So, you know, we spoke about the Bloodline uh, area. Here you can see uh, a picture with no yeet written on it. And here's some of the Bloodline members. So uh, all the various members of the Bloodline on the uh, wall. So I believe this is right next to the Firefly Funhouse. There's the chair at the head of the table. So you can go and picture the Funhouse or you can come into like this Bloodline room, uh, which is really clever, actually. It's really cool. Uh, good little setup. Just looking at the look at that. There's uh, she's going in the Hall of Fame, isn't she? Uh, and there's the uh, bloodline thing on the table. It's very, it's very well done. It's very cool. Great pictures. Um, I, I know that there is some Roman stuff there. It's a shame there's no ring war gear and bits like that in this space uh, as well. But as a as a as a photo kind of opportunity, very cool. And there's that. I suppose you get a picture of that. That's the uh, Bloodline family tree, of course. So, uh, very, very cool. Love that. Right, The Rock might be imposing the final boss at the moment, but that doesn't mean he still can't make a young fan's uh, birthday special. I know I don't look like it, but I'm Maui. So there we go. Uh, he talks to a young kid and he says, I know I don't look like it, but I am Maui. And he sings uh, uh, that line, you're welcome, from the Moana film. Uh, so a lovely little moment there where he makes a young fan's uh, kind of birthday extra special. Uh, this was amazing, man. This was amazing. I don't know if this is the best clip that I've got of it. I think it might be. So, uh, yeah, this young girl roasted The Rock. Comes in whenever he wants, does whatever he wants, says whatever he wants, and then you're shaking your head. You don't agree? No. What's that? So basically this, uh, it came up like, I, I'm the final boss. I can do what I want. If I want a main event WrestleMania, I'll do that, right? I'm, I'm the final boss. I'm the rock, right? And this girl, uh, the microphone comes over. She's like, uh, you didn't win the Royal Rumble. Cody did, right? And the crowd are like, oh! <laughs> and all the rock can do is like stand there, smile and... <laughs> he got cooked. He got cooked. So uh, that clip's been doing the rounds, man. People love that. The Rock said he was two hours late to WWE World because he was watching highlights of Julian Hurts and the Eagles losing in the playoffs. <sighs> Great heel work there. Joe here, fans at WWE World, where the is The Rock? And there's The Rock right there. <laughs> <laughs> fast as late. I think this was was this central intelligence or something there he is uh, fast asleep
And then there was uh, this. This was shown on uh, Jimmy Fallon. Really cool. A picture of the Rock's dads fighting Roman's dads from back in the day. And uh, Sports Key to Wrestling said, could the new generation recreate this down the line? So there's the Rock. There's Roman. So that's the Rock folder. So what haven't we done? We didn't do fun. We didn't do much. We didn't do other. Uh, we didn't do GCW. We didn't do cute or Drew Gulak or Usos. So um, I, I will start work on a bonus episode right now of Unseen. I think we boxed off a lot of the big stuff, but there's still some fun stuff that we need to have a look at. So um, yeah, if you enjoyed this, join me for the bonus un Unseen, which I'm going to work on now. <laughs>